Oh. We're going to start again. So, hey Leslie, how you doing? Oh, sorry? Yeah. Oh. <laughs> I'm good. How are you? I'm, I'm good, yeah. How's uh, lockdown been for you? Um, I'm not going to lie. It was pretty good. I had a good time. I slept. I didn't work. Um, I didn't do anything. Um, and yeah, I actually had a pretty... Really decent lockdown to the housemates. Yeah. With my cat. Uh, did lots of art. Did some drawing. Did some writing. Just you write? Things. Just on the blog. Oh, right. Okay. What's your blog about? Um, it is about. Uh, it started out off as my kind of perspective as a black person starting out in the jewelry industry, and then now it's kind of developed into some sort of like home for, well, developing it into a kind of home for black people in the jewelry industry right because i remember at one point you were saying like there's not a good representation or is it like you don't know of many black jewelers out there yeah so essentially i um when i started working in hatton garden which is about a year ago now um i didn't really notice that there were many black people in the area didn't really see many um and then I had the idea to do a blog like a year ago in quarantine. I decided I was like, no, actually, need to do this. I need to figure out what I'm going to write about. So um, I thought I'd just write about black people in the jewelry industry and see what everyone's up to. Um, but then when I tried to find black people in the industry, I was like, there's no one here. I know that there must be people here, but I couldn't really find anyone online. Um, and so I decided to start making like a list of people that I did find in the hopes of contacting them and just being able to interview them or like get their experiences um, and that's what I did that's what I started doing in quarantine and then it just kind of took off from there mm. yeah who have you contacted so far like because I remember there was a Vogue thing yeah there was a Vogue thing <laughs> I was not in Vogue <laughs> I was not in Vogue. Um, one day. One day. <laughs> one day. One day, you know, back. Hashtag Vogue dreams. Um, <laughs> gosh, do you remember that, like, that trend on Instagram where everyone was, like, posting pictures of themselves on Vogue? Me. I was, like, I, you know, I downloaded the filter. I really did. I'm yet to take a photo with the Vogue filter because I don't feel I'm, I'm Vogue enough yet. I was just like... Why are people doing this? Is Vogue this free advertising? Well, you know, like, <laughs> it's whatever it is. Um, but no, so like in starting the list, I and uh, with everything that happened in the summer with Black Lives Matter, lots of black designers started coming to the surface a bit more, mm -hmm. and so I just kept kind of recording names and keeping like. A, so I have like a sort of list of like black people in the industry. It doesn't matter what you do if you're a designer, if you're a maker, if you're like, a setter if you work in advertising if you work in i don't know admin doesn't matter you're on there um and just off the back of that just reaching out to people who are kind of local and um, just met just a bunch of people and it just so happened that um one of the people that i kind of made contact with um she ended up being in vogue which is insane because she's Bermudian as well that's so cool and i was just like oh my god i know someone in vogue and then Bermudians get everywhere. Everybody. It's like when we pop up, it's like, yo, the whole island's like, bruh. Yeah. <laughs> I always tell people that if you, because people are like, oh, I've never met a Bermudian person before I met you. And I'm like, you've met me now, and then give it a few, give it a few days, a few years, you're going to meet loads more now. As soon as you meet one, you're going to meet billions. Yeah. Oh, not technically. But a lot. Yeah. You'll meet more. There aren't even a billion. Yeah, you'll you'll just meet a lot. Let's just leave it as a lot. So, I'm so extra. <laughs> oh my gosh. Did you have any plans like this year that were kind of like disrupted by Rona? Um. Yeah, I wanted to go away for my birthday. Where? That's a very like first world problem. I don't even know. I just wanted to go somewhere by myself. Um, and rent a nice Airbnb uh -huh. with a pool and take my iPad, do some drawing, sit and basically do what I did in quarantine but with a pool. I wanted to do that for my birthday. <laughs> but um, Oh my gosh. Yeah, <laughs> that got cancelled. And um, that was the only thing I had going this year to be honest. 
Uh-huh. Um, oh, actually, I was meant to go to Bermuda this year yes. uh, for a wedding, and me and Tasha meant to go, but obviously the wedding got cancelled. So. Yeah, yeah, I mean, it is what it is, isn't it? It is what it is. So what are your plans for the future then? Well, foreseeable. Foreseeable At this future. rate. Well, I mean, I did have plans, and then yesterday, Boris announced second lockdown, part two. Here mm. we go. For the whole of November. <sighs> Um, I was meant to start a new job. Mm-hmm. Hopefully, we'll be still starting a new job. Um, but I'm just going to keep pushing with the list. I have a lot of stuff to do with that, a lot of admin, and I've been kind of trying to sort my personal life out mm-hmm. um, so that I can get comfortable enough to dedicate enough time to doing that. Um, because, you know, I have met a lot of people through it and it's been received well. Um, I don't know, I'm thinking of maybe like starting up a little side side business maybe. Not really a business, but a lot of people kind of come to me asking me about jewellery and uh, asking for advice or help getting something. So maybe just a little bit of kind of bespoke sourcing. Mm-hmm. Um, and then there's always like the fact that I have what's now an actual addiction to buying gemstones mm-hmm. so i will need to resell those at some point yeah um so yeah probably maybe start up something there but i'm just easy we'll see how it goes so what so does that people know so your background is um i am a gemologist right um and which means that i study like studied uh, how to look at identify uh, precious gemstones diamonds right um how to grade diamonds how to grade gemstones like ruby sapphires uh-huh. emeralds all that um look for treatments look for synthetics look for all sorts of stuff for yeah um, and then give kind of ideas towards value um and yeah so that's what i do sweet wait but what made you get into this field as well um i i went on work experience (laughs) when i was at secondary school (laughs) and you know you like doing work experience and you set it up really late like you just forget about it um so i did it last minute in this family jewelers and uh they didn't really know what to do with me so they had a gemologist and she was going up to central this was in colston and she's going up to central london so they were like just go with her uh, for the day and they gave her like 800 pounds in cash right uh, yeah and we just like went shopping and i was like this is a great job this is exactly <laughs> what i want to do with my life well just get cash money to go and buy stuff go buy some sapphires and <laughs> some like i don't know some mannequins i was like yeah this is great and um so yeah that was like my first taste of like gemology and she showed me like the place where she was studying at gemme and then the rest of the week uh, just worked in this jewelers for a bit. It actually there was like an attempted robbery there as well. What? It was insane. What? Yeah, it was crazy. It was fun. <laughs> oh no! <laughs> <laughs> Robberies are fun, Leslie. <laughs> but it was like I was just like the guy was getting the ten minute health and safety thing, and he's like, "Oh, in case of a robbery," and I was like, "That's not gonna happen."